everyone and welcome to Make It Monday. I'm Sarah with Beyond Fabric and we are glad you can join us today for the continuation of our Palooza. So the last time you joined us, we showed how to make an envelope style pillow and today we are going to show you how to do an invisible zipper pillow. So this is what we're going to show today. So as we discussed previously with pillows, and let's just throw those out of the way. Uh, when you're deciding what pillow to, what size to make your pillow form, you need to consider your, or your pillowcase, you need to consider your pillow form. So I want to show you two pillow forms. These are both 18 by 18 pillow forms, but as you notice, this one is a lot plumper than this one. So they're both faux down, nice and squishy, but this is definitely a firmer pillow. So consider that when you go to do your sizes. As we discussed before, when you are deciding what to cut your pillow case, your form, if it's a 20 inch form, then your finished would be an 18 inch if you like a full pillow. And if you're using something that's a little bit less dense like this one, you definitely want it to fill it up. So your finished would be an 18. So if you have a 20 form, you would cut a 19 if you're using a half inch seam allowance. So you have a finished 18. If you're using a plump pillow and you don't like a really full pillow, then you would decide maybe only one inch smaller. So if you have a 20 inch form, then again, you would want to cut it at a 20. So it would be a finished 19 so that you still have a little bit of a room, but it fills it up. Your finished pillow case is not the size of your pillow form, if that makes sense. So now that we have our pillow forms discussed, Let's go ahead and cut out our pieces, which I've already done. So our pillow today is going to be a 22, so it'll be a finished 20. I have my front and I have my back. You only need two pieces for this instead of three like the last time. So your front and your back, and we're going to start by laying them right sides together. Once you have them right sides together, we are gonna take our handy dandy pillow ruler. This will give us a nice tapered corner. We have this available on our website and right now we still have the sweepstakes going that you could win a ruler. The link is provided below, it is on our Facebook. You just have to go and make a comment. And then at the end of the challenge, when we're done with our pillow palooza, then we will draw a winner. So this is a very handy dandy ruler. It has again, a tapered corner. This is the straight edge. This is the straight edge. You're going to line this up with the top of your pillow, this with the bottom of your pillow, and we're going to cut out that corner. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have it lined up on the top and on the side. We're going to press down just like with our rulers and cut away that excess. This is going to help us not get dog ear corners on our pillows because we don't want dog ears on our pillows. Cute on our dogs, but not on our pillows. You're gonna do this for each corner of your pillow. Also, if you ever forget the measurements, the handy dandy rule for pillow form versus pillow case, it is written on your ruler as well to help you remember. All our corners have been tapered. Now, before we go to put our zipper in, I like to either serge the edge where the zipper will go or do a zigzag stitch if you don't have a, a serger handy. Um, also, it helps keep in mind which way the direction of the fabric is going. So when you go to put your zipper in, you don't accidentally put your zipper on the other side and your flowers are going the wrong way or your direction of your pattern is going the wrong way. So this is, again, a directional print. We want the flowers going up, so this will be where our zipper will go. So you can either put a pin or a clip, just so you know, and don't get confused before you go to the machine. That is the edge where my zipper is going to go. 
Um, same with a nap. If a fabric has a nap, you want to make sure that it's brushing down smooth, not going up, which will make weird designs. This one does not have a nap or any direction, so it doesn't matter. So we're just going to say this will be where our zipper will go. So now let's go to the machine and do a quick zigzag stitch on that raw edge since I did not bring my serger in because some people don't have sergers, so I'll show you the other way. So all we're doing is just a quick zigzag along the edge. This is just going to help with the fraying since we are putting our zipper here. Again, if you have a serger, just run this through the serger. You can also use pinking shears. I don't like to use pinking shears though because then I lose my line to follow when I'm sewing my um, zipper on to line them up. But you can. There's always more than one way to achieve a goal. So all we did was just run a little zigzag along the edge. We're going to put that over to the side and do that with our other piece. I am sure y'all are ready to put in this zipper. And this one fabric I'm using for the top is a linen, a little bit more delicate um, of a, a weave that likes to shift to move. So just handle it with a little more care. Zigzag stitch is also going to help if you do have a fabric that likes to stretch or shift and move. It'll help keep it from being so um, shifty. It'll stabilize that edge, which is where we're putting the zipper. All right, we have our two pieces cut. We have the edge, the corners tapered, and we have the edge where our zipper is going to be zigzagged. Now let's go to our zipper. We have picked out a zipper that is bigger than our actual edge that we're attaching it to. I prefer my zippers to be longer. I just find that it's easier to put in because we don't have to get so close to the pool. We have our zipper. Make sure your zipper works before you go through the trouble of putting it in. And then the first thing we're going to do is press this zipper open. So with an invisible zipper, you see you have your teeth that kind of roll over. We're going to open up those teeth. So we're going to open them up and then we're going to press on that tape. There's a tape that's attached to your coil. We want to press that flat. We're not pressing on the coil side. We don't want to melt our coils because then we're not going to be able to zip our zipper. So you can also use a press cloth if your iron tends to get finicky and burn stuff. So we are pressing it open so that we are pressing on the coil or on the zipper part, the tape part, not the coil. So you see how we're pressing that open? So the coils are going to the back side, and we are going to press on the tape side, just right there. This is probably the most important step with putting in an invisible zipper. Had my steam shower for the day. Now do the other side. Again, if you're worried about melting your coil, you can use a press cloth. I would like for y'all to see what I'm doing, so I am not. So we're just pressing just on that tape side. Now we have our zipper pressed open. So once our zipper is pressed open, it still works. We didn't burn anything. Good job us. 
Now let's go on to the magic tape. So I love putting zippers in when I use this tape. It is just a basting tape. It's an eighth inch. It is called my magic tape and I do not like to do zippers without it. So I have some that's opened somewhere. Oh. So it comes on a roll. It's double sided. You're going to take and place it right over where we have zigzagged on the edge of that fabric. This is where our zipper is going. Once we have the zipper tape applied to it, the basting tape, we are going, see I even call it my zipper tape. This is my zipper tape. <laughs> Peel it off and you'll see where it's shiny. That's where the tape is. Just peel it off. Now, with an invisible zipper, the point is for it to be invisible. So lay your zipper tape. You'll see the coil facing up at you. The pull will be facing down towards the right side of your fabric. And I will start it with a pull off my fabric because again, I don't like to sew near the pull. And we are just running the zipper tape right along that edge making sure that our fabric stays smooth. And off the edge. So, one zipper tape attached to one side. Let's go sew it. Since we will be attaching a zipper, we need a zipper foot. So let's go ahead and remove our walking foot. And I have my zipper foot. Now I am using just a regular zipper foot. I'm not using an invisible zipper foot. This is my favorite zipper foot because I can move it from left to right to get right where I need it to be. So the goal with sewing on our zipper is to have our needle line up with that edge of the foot. So my needle is with this edge of the foot because that edge of the foot is going to be what's pushing up against the zipper to keep those coils out of the way. And then it's going to pierce right beside the coils. Again, the closer we are to an invisible, the more invisible it is. So take your zipper and lay it right beside your foot. So the metal is actually going to push up against where those coils are. And we're gonna double check and make sure it's perfect. We're going down right beside it. We're not going through our coil because if you go through our coil, then your zipper will not zip. If you look at your zipper tape, there's like a line right beside where your coil is. That's basically where we're stitching. So as you're following, because we're not following our needle, we're following our zipper and our foot. I am lining up this mark right here with the edge of my foot. The needle knows where to go. Now, if you're not comfortable having your finger right here pressing on that, you can always use your handy dandy stiletto to push on it instead. You see how it opens it up? You can also use that, whichever you're most comfortable with. And just keep sewing all the way down. The tape is holding it in place. We don't have to pin, we don't have to clip. It's not going anywhere. thread. Before you go to sew the other side on, you need to make sure it zips. So I always like to do it a couple of times. Everything's working good. All right. Now 
we have to line up the other side to this side. We're gonna make it super simple. If you flip it over, where our zipper tape meets our edge of our fabric, we're going to make a little cut. Okay, we have a little cut. Now you can line it up on your board and right across from it, you're gonna make a cut that matches it. So there are the same distance from the end. We have two cuts and make a cut. So now our cuts are in the same spot. Let me come a little deeper so I can see it. Since we're working on black, there we go. So cuts are in the same spot. Now open up your zipper. So lay our one side face up. When a pellet goes together, right sides go together. So take your other side and put it right sides together because this is how we want our pillow to look. This way there's no confusion on which side the zipper tape goes. So this is where our zipper has to go. And this is the side that we have already uh, zigzag stitched. This is our zipper tape that needs to go on that side. Take your magic tape. Follow it along. The edge. Peel it off. Throw it to the side. Now those cuts that we made, that cut is the edge of our fabric. So we are going to line up the edge of our fabric with the cut. Now go to the other side. There's our little cut. Line up that little mark that we made with the edge of our fabric. And then the middle gets eased in. Start from one side and meet in the middle. There we have it. So there's our clip indicating the edge of the fabric here and the clip indicating the edge of the fabric here so that our ends will meet up. Make sure it's nice and pressed and let's go stitch it on. For upholstery weight fabric, you need to make sure to use a slightly larger needle based off the weight of your fabric. So I am using a 14 today. We have sewed each side of the zipper tape to our fabric. Now we are going to zip it up and make sure everything works. And I didn't get anything twisted. See, I did, there we go. And let's inspect. Do we see any zipper tape? We do not. It looks very invisible. Can't even see a zipper there. We have succeeded. Now let's go ahead and sew this pillow shut. Move your zipper, pull back somewhere in the middle, flip it right sides together. Before we switch our foot to sew this pillow together, we have to make basically a little end for this so that the zipper has a stop because the zipper is not going to go all the way to the edge of our pillow. So matching up those little notches that we made, those little notches are super important. We're gonna match up those notches and we're going to clip or pin, either one, that edge. So 
Notches still matched up. Yep, we're good. And clipped. Do that with the other side. So match up our notches. A little clip on there. When we go over to the machine, we are going to stitch right beside our coil so that we create a stop. And we're going to go back and forth to make sure that if we get frustrated and zipper unzippering our pillow, we don't rip through those stitches. You want to make sure you have a good stop created on both sides. Because we are going to be sewing close to the coils, I need to move my needle to the other side of my zipper foot. So you can slide it, or if you have a different kind of zipper foot, you can adjust your needle. You want to make sure we are not going to hit our foot because that would break our needle. I don't know about you, but I am not a fan of breaking needles. So we have these down, we are right beside our coil, and we are going to create that first stop. So we're going to back stitch. We're going to back stitch again. We're going to keep back stitching. Now we're going to go all the way over to our corner. thread. We're good. Unclip. Go to the other side. So now we are doing our other stop. Inspect. Everything looks good. Unclip. Let's go ahead and trim back some of this zipper now. We have a stop. We don't have to worry about it. We'll also clip those corners in a minute when we sew, but not yet. So now we have our ends where we have stops. We have our zipper in the middle so that we have it open so we can flip. Let's go ahead and switch our foot so we can sew this thing shut. We have our zipper in. Let's go ahead and clip or pin the right and the, the front and the back together, right sides together, so that we can stitch. is super important especially if you're using different weights of fabric like one of these is an upholstery fabric it has a nice backing on it it's not going to stretch or shift the other one is a linen that's not backed so it will stretch and shift so we want to make sure that these get pinned together so that one's not stretching more than the other i'm also going to sew with the stretchier one on the bottom with the other on top that will also help eliminate some of that stretching. And if you're using a walking foot, that definitely helps as well. We have it pinned. Now we have a zipper here, so we're gonna sew this side, that side, and that side. On these corners, they are tapered. That doesn't mean they're rounded. So you are still going to come to a point, pivot, and keep sewing. We are not rounding these corners. Let's get this sewn. Where we're starting is on our zipper. I'm going to fold those zipper tapes back since this is an invisible zipper and it's going to curve that way anyways when you are zippering and unzippering and zippering. So we are folding it back to start our stitch. You can use a uh, three eighths, half inch seam allowance, whatever you calculated when you did your cut size. Let 
line it up with the edge. Make sure to back stitch a couple of times. Keep your edges lined up and stitch. Remember when we get to that corner, I'm going to back stitch, needle down and pivot. I need to go up one more stitch. All right, needle down and pivot. We're still lined up with the edge and continue sewing. I do back stitch on my corners just because I will be clipping away that excess fabric there. So I want to make sure I have a nice sturdy stitch there. Honestly, at home, I will double stitch these pillows or stitch it and then serge it just in case you have a couple of pillow fights. Get to the corner, back stitch, pivot, still lined up with the edge, and our last stitch. Remember, we're only doing three sides because the bottom has a zipper, so we can take it off and wash it or change it out. You can always do like holiday pillows and have many covers just for one pillow form. It's a nice, quick, easy way to change up the way a room looks. Oh, I think we're going to have to add in our pillow palooza a pillow sleep. That's another good way to add a pop of change in color, especially for the holidays. Stay tuned for that. Go ahead and clip your corners. So we're just removing that bulk. You're not going through your stitches. Now you can either zigzag stitch around, you could pink around, or you can use your serger and serge around, especially if you have a fabric that is fraying a lot. Go ahead and open up your zipper so we can show how to stuff this thing, which is super easy. We just put the pillow in. Take your stiletto, go ahead and pop those corners so we have nice sharp points. There's one. two, three, and four. Grab your pillow form. Now don't forget, we sell these in the shop. They're made locally by Grouchies, and they're only $5. Super handy. Make sure our pillow fills in those corners. Aren't y'all glad we used that ruler and tapered these corners so we don't end up with dog ears? Pillow's looking good. Zip up your pillow and your zipper. One invisible zipper pillow. Thank you for joining. And if you liked this pillow palooza, make sure to stay tuned. We know we have one more definitely. And now I think I just added on another one to it. So there may be even more, who knows? Uh, but we do have the ruler giveaway that will be in July. So the ruler giveaway. If you would like to win one of these, make sure to go and comment and always subscribe to our channel so you get notified every time we put a new video up. Thank you again for joining us on another Make It Monday. Mm -hmm.